2 Kings chapter 2, we left off with Elijah raptured. Elijah has taken on the mantle and already has shown the power of Elijah by departing the, the Jordan River so he can cross on dry land. And we perk up in verse 16. And they said unto him, this is the sons of the prophets. Let's pick up verse 14. 22, 14. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell upon him. It wasn't handed to him. Fell upon him. Like when Elijah met him. And fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? When he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither. And Elijah went over. And when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah does rest upon Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him, worshiping, honor, an oriental thing. Now, they're not worshiping Elijah. It's just respect. like respect and how we shake hands. That's all it is. But when you do it as a religion, then you're wrong because you are honoring a man. And they said unto him, this is the prophets, Behold now, there be with thy servants fifty strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master, that would be Elijah. Now, chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind. So, verse 3. The sons of the prophets that were in Bethlehem came forth to Elijah and said, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away the... They knew it. It has happened. And let's seek thy master. You've got Christians like that today. I know the word of God. I know what the Bible says. And then something happens. There's unbelief. Least preventure the spirit that would be the Holy Spirit, capital S. So the Holy Spirit would have part in the rapture. And when the church is raptured, the Holy Spirit goes with them. The Spirit of the Lord, Jehovah, has taken him up. Okay? That was pretty much, that was witnessed. That's a knowledge, common knowledge. God has taken up Elijah. Now listen, this is not new. If you know your Bible and if you're the prophets and you understand the 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 the, the testimony and the uh, the testament of the scriptures, Genesis chapter five and verse twenty four, we already read that there was a man named Enoch and God took him. So this is no new strange thing. It's in the scriptures. Now, maybe when Enoch was raptured, what, what, what do you mean? What, I don't understand. What is that? But here it's already happened. It's in the Jewish history. It's in the Bible. Moses has written Genesis. And the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of the Lord has taken him up, okay? And cast him upon some mountain. What? And into some valley. Who do they think God is? Boom! Elijah's gone. Where am I? I'm all by myself. I'm, I don't even know where I am. That's cruel. And you got to wonder, and I don't know what the condition of the church will be when the church is raptured. I believe it would be very few number that will be taken alive when the rapture happens. Saved Christians. I think we're going to get to a time like, like Noah, he wasn't under the law. Like Lot, he wasn't under the law. Out of 12 tribes, one tribe stood up and said, okay, Moses, we're on your side. But you got to wonder when you read a passage like this, we're looking at the rapture. And let's go back to Genesis 5, 24 again. And we're going to kind of read into 
<laughs> maybe in between the lines, and I don't mean to do that, but Genesis 5, 24. And if I am reading between the lines, I apologize to the Lord by the blood of Jesus Christ. It says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not. Now they say that about Joseph. Well, we have, you know, 11 brethren, and one son is not. Not what? But God took him. And we got over here with, the, with these prophets. All right, Elijah's been raptured. According with scripture, with scripture, it looks like there's a possibility that when we do go, how many Christians that are alive, looks like people are going to go looking for us. Oh, I haven't got a whole uh, a brother in a long time. I haven't heard nothing from him. I don't know if it's going to be a paper, newspaper articles that all of a sudden people millions disappear. I don't think it's, I don't I don't know why the newspaper would report that. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. But he was not, not what? It, it, I would take the implication that people went looking for Enoch one day. Because several years, many years, a lot of years later, here is a man that is raptured. And let's go. We got fifty men that will go. That will go looking for him. I think the church is going to be so apostate. The rapture is going to happen. If it were to happen on a Sunday morning, the services would just go on. They would get out of church and go to their restaurant, and maybe a week later they'll realize, oh, the true Christians are gone. That's what I believe. I, I definitely could be wrong. But we get from an implication that Christians that are raptured, Revelation 3, Revelation 4, they're going to be people who are going to come looking for us. That's a scriptural proof. I mean, like I said, I can only speak of myself and I'm not praising myself. I'm not lifting myself. But I'm just giving you the testimony of what I know. I could be preaching at the farmer's market one Saturday morning. If the Lord, if the Lord comes, calls his bride away. All of a sudden, boom, the microphone stops. There's our clothes. There's the hat. There's the signs. There's the gospel tracks that were in their hand. And we're gone. Don't you think somebody would get up and where would they go? Are they in that car? Don't you think somebody would call the police? They were just standing there right now and all this stuff is there. They're running around naked. <laughs> they don't know. They wouldn't know what happened to us. And... I don't know. I just, I don't know what's going to happen at the rapture. I don't know when the rapture is going to happen. But it looks like there'll be people looking for, maybe your boss will be like, you know, it's been a week. He hasn't shown up to work. Man, that guy is respectful. That guy shows up. He's on time. Man, if he's not here, he's sick. 911, what's your emergency? My, my, I don't know. My employer, he hasn't been here. This is totally wrong. You need to send the cops to his house. You need to find out if he's dead. Because he hasn't called, uh, uh, called a hospital maybe or something. We're supposed to have that testimony as Christians. Many do not. They show up late. They don't care, blah, 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 blah. And if they were missing, some of the people of the world wouldn't even know. And he said, ye shall not send. <laughs> don't do it, Elisha says. Don't do it. There's no reason. He's been, he's gone. God took him. And watch this. When they urged him to, he was ashamed. Man, they're just pestering Elijah. Dude, we got to go. We got to go. Listen, he's on a mountain somewhere, Elijah. Isn't he your master? Wasn't he like your father? Don't you care that he is somewhere, you know, distressed? Don't you know he's a valley somewhere? Maybe lions or something? And Elisha gets to the point is, oh, man, all right. all right, you want to say that, go. And he said, send. They sent, therefore, 50 men, and they sought him. Now, look, look, look at this, number three days. Why does that three days keep showing up? Why not four days? He'd be stinking. Why not seven days? Some of the feasts were seven days. Three days. 
Now, we don't know between the time when Elijah was raptured and finally Elijah says, all right, go ahead, but here's three days. That's a principal thing to mark in your Bible, three days. But found him not. I don't know how hard they look. But that, that seemed like Enoch. I want to check one place here. I don't know if we're going to go there, but let me check here real quick what it says about Enoch. And maybe people look for Enoch, and maybe people are going to look for us. I don't know. They're looking for, looking for Elijah. Now, you can't press that thing all the way because, I mean, Elijah was within the Lord. Yeah, let's go look at Hebrews 11.5. This just came into my heart right now. It answers that question, and he was not. Not what? Scripture was scripture. Hebrews 11.5. By faith, Enoch was translated. Look at that. Enoch had faith. God must have told him. Elijah had faith. He was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. So look at that. The people were looking for Enoch too. Here are these sons of the prophet, the 50 men that they get, they went looking for Elijah. He's not found. It was the faith of Enoch that God said, hey, you're coming with me one day. That's my faith. I'm looking for the blessed hope. That's, that's Hebrews. And when they came again to him, Elisha, for he tarried at Jericho, that cursed city. So he crosses the, 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 the river Jordan and he just camps out at Jericho. And these guys go out for three days. He said unto him, did I not say unto thee, unto you, go not? <laughs> yeah, he did. Was it their lack of faith? Maybe God put them on a mountain. Maybe God put them in a valley. That's what it looks like to me, a lack of faith. I think God would be better than that. I mean, that'd be like saying, all right, the church is going to be raptured. The church is going to be raptured. And the church is raptured. Now it's just like, well, let's go send rockets to the moon because maybe God put them on the backside of the moon. <laughs> That's not my God. And when you compare scripture with scripture, he says exactly where uh, Revelation 4, I'm going to heaven. I'm not going to backside of the moon. I'm not going to a mountain. I'm not going to any valley. And we read chapter 2, verse 1, when he go up to heaven. It's there. It's been recorded. We pick up more in the life of Elijah, verse 19. And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Jericho, I assume. Behold, I pray thee, the situation, that's the first time that word shows up, situation. And the only other place that word shows up is in Psalms 48, verse 2. We got a situation here. There's not many situations in the Bible. It's only twice. The situation of this city is pleasant. It's nice. It's wonderful. It's great. As my Lord see it. You see how great this place looks? See how wonderful it is? But the water is not. And the ground is barren. Something wrong with the water. Because there's water here. We're going to see. I don't know if it's salty. I don't know if it's bitter. I don't know. But it it's water that is not good for the people to drink. And it, it's not good for the crops. There's no crops. The ground's barren. In order to have life, the first things you got to find for a city, you got to find water source. And when you're in the kind of desert region that we are talking about in the Bible, if it's desert, there's no cities. There's just nomads passing through with camels that can carry large amounts of water in their body. There are only cities where there's a well you can dig water. Here is water. But it's water that can't give life. And he said, Elijah said, bring me a new cruise. That's some kind of vessel. A new one. Don't bring me an old one. 
Don't bring me one that's been battered and beaten. I want a new one. Jesus said, new wine bottles. And put salt therein. All right. Take this instrument, throw some salt in there. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters. So here's a, but these spring of waters don't bring life. And cast the salt in there. There goes the salt. If it's a spring of water, that salt would already been washed down or put washed to the to the ground. It doesn't say how much salt, but and cast the salt in there. And said, Thus saith the Lord Je Jehovah. This is what God said. <coughs> Elijah's doing the speaking of God. I have healed these waters. There was something wrong with them. You want to try uh, a faith healer minister today? All right. You don't want to go to the hospital behind me and heal all those people in all those hospital rooms? You don't want to go to a children's hospital where they take care of cancer and, uh, you know, where they're missing limbs. You don't want to do that? Let's go find somewhere where the water is terrible and they can't drink from it. Let's try that one. I'll give you some salt. It's right there. The waters were healed. These waters, they shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. So you could not drink these water. You could not use the water for crops. It brought death, and it couldn't bring crops. And Elijah, by the word of God, takes some salt, throws it in. Moses did that one time with the children of Israel. They're, they're going through the wilderness. They're, they're marching along. They come to this water, and it's just bitter. And God said to take that tree and throw it in the waters, and then they were able to drink. So we got a tree, and we got salt that has healed waters. What about that? I don't know, but there's something about it. I have life through a tree, Jesus Christ. Christ said, I am the salt of the, of the, wor of the world. But I can't press those all the way. Shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. So the waters were healed unto this day. It's still healed. According to the saying of Elijah. Is that what Elijah said? So men wrote the Bible. Yes. But God used them by the inspiration, and the mouth that God gave the man was the words of God. There it is right there. Now, you got a problem with that? You got an attitude with that? That's between you and God. I believe, okay, I believe God said, hey, no more death of this water, no more bearing of this water. And, well, Elijah said it. That's because God spoke out. That's the definition of inspiration. God said it and came out of his lips, and when he wrote it down with his pen, I say that the pen is the, is the instrument of man, and the ink inside that pen is the Holy Spirit writing. I have no problem with that. And he went up from thence unto Bethel. Again, that's one of the cities we talked about in chapter 2. That's the house of God. That's where Jacob met God. House of God, Bethel, turned into a religious center of golden calves. And as he was going up, by the way, on the road to Bethel, there came forth little children out of the city. I don't, we don't know if it's Bethel itself, but, and mocked him. Now, before we read the rest of this cruel, wicked God of the Bible, what was the law about children who didn't obey? They were stoned. Here, to be stoned. 
You know what we do today in the world today when we got children that mock and children don't obey their we we give them all oh, oh you just said we make excuses for them we get them a lawyer they can't afford and they get to go in with a population that's just as worse as they are so they can learn just as worse as they are and come out and be just as worse. And many of them run for office. Many of them become lawyers. Many of them will become salesmen to sell you junk that you don't need and, and take out of your wallets. There's no discipline. I was watching the other day on YouTube. I was watching children who would get all the tampered tantrum that they didn't get the presents that they wanted from their parents. Or their parents also played a joke on them. You know, a funny ha-ha. And they get upset for a stupid gift. Yeah, it was a stupid gift. But you don't need to get that kind of attitude. Many of those children should have been taken in the bedroom and had dad taken. The father was right there, many of them. Laughing. So now we read, mocked him. At that moment, those children should have been disciplined. That man is a man of God. That man is older than you. That man has respect from you. Deserves. Deserves respect. And said unto him, Go up, thou bald head. Go up, thou bald head. All right, so now we learn by Elijah, he has no hair. Why is this story in here? So you don't recognize Elijah as Elijah, and you don't get him mixed up with John the Baptist. We're not, they're not looking for the second coming of Elijah. They're looking for the second coming of Elijah. Let's look at Malachi 4. And according to the scriptures, well, Elijah has long hair, comes with a camel's girdle thing and that leather, and we see that with John the Baptist. And Malachi chapter 4, verse 3. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son, capital S, of righteousness, that's Jesus, that's the Messiah, arise with healing in his wings. You shall go forth and grow up as calves, ooh, golden calves, but no, calves of a soul. That's real animals, living, taken care of. And you shall tread down the wicked, the second advent. And they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, second advent. Save the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I command unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming that great and dreadful day of the Lord. They're looking for Elijah. So a bald man shows up. On, you know, you're, that's, a, that's the type of Elijah. That ain't the one we're looking for. And Jesus already told us, had they believed Jesus who he was, John the Baptist would have been Elijah. But they rejected him. So they're looking for Elijah and the Messiah. And they both came on the Mount of Figuration with Moses. So when you look at those two prophets in Revelation that we read in, in chapter 11, Revelation, who would be the only two men that everybody's looking for that they're not looking for no more? Moses and Elijah. Jesus shows up afterwards. He went up thence into Bethel, house of God. You would figure you would bring your children up according to God, wouldn't you? And mocked him and said to him, Go up, thou bald head, go up, thou bald head. And he turned back and looked on them. <laughs> uh oh. Be ye angry, and curse them within, in the name of the Lord, and he sinned. The Bible says, Elisha, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. I would think that is vain. Almost like he's been ranked on his whole life, maybe. And there came out two she-bears. That's the first time bears show up in the Bible. Bear is also a representation of the Antichrist. The leopard, the bear, the lion. This is a she-bear. Mama's upset. 
And you don't get a mama bear upset by taking or having her cubs go away. Two she bears out of the wood. We say woods, but wood. A unity of all the trees together. And tear forty and two children of them. That's a lot of children mocking on one man. That's a whole village. <laughs> There came forth little children out of the sea. Now, we're not told how many, but then it ends up 42. I mean, when you first read 23, when you say, eh, a couple of them came up, maybe a group of kids. Right. 42 children, all in unity about you're a bald head man, you're a bald head man. And that bear, the only other place it shows up, bears, plural, is Isaiah 59, 11. All right, that, that one's plural. There's also bear. I don't have that one mark. That's a lot of children. That amount of children where I live, where I live right now, would be like three or four, five, six, seven roads. Yeah, I don't have 42 children on, on my street. Somebody hasn't been admiring to the word of God. Somebody has been grown up with the commandments. Somebody hasn't been teaching their children right. And the law said they're going to be like that. They're to be disciplined and they're to be killed. God sent two bears out. Is it right? Is it wrong? What did the law say? I'm not going to tangle with God. And he, Elisha, went from thence to Mount Carmel. Uh, that's where Elijah was with the prophets of Baal. And from thence he returned to Samaria. Uh, he's right back in the center of the calves of Jeroboam, the Baal of uh, Jezebel, and <coughs> Beelzebub of the Philistines, and whatever else is there. I don't know why he's wandering all around, but he settles back in Samaria. <coughs> 